Frank, I'd be remiss if I didn't start with the fact that, um, like all of our conversations about domestic terrorism, that happened on January 6th. And like our concerns about violence here, the, the most innocent victim, a six-year-old Palestinian American boy, has already been murdered in what federal and what authorities believe is a hate crime. So we're already in it. What do we do now? Hatred makes strange bedfellows. We're seeing the kids now of pro-Hamas and neo-Nazis marrying up together because they have like enemies. They, they seem to be uh, anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish in particular. So one day they'll yell at each other and threaten each other, and the next day they'll marry up against the Jews. This is where we are. Um, nothing happens in a vacuum, Nicole. This battleground of threat and risk has been prepared for years in America. It's been led by a president at the time and now a former president, giving license to hatred and racism. Even now, a former president who says Hezbollah is, quote unquote, smart. Uh, and seems to be lashing out at Israel because they didn't support him. Um, and Netanyahu, as you know, came out and said and that Biden won the election and congratulated Biden. That's enough to anger hundreds of thousands of Americans led by Trump. So um, this is not easily uh, dug out of the hole that we're, we're in right now. Uh, within the last week, FBI Director Chris Wray has addressed about 5,000 Jewish community leaders on a call of what's called the security, Secure Community Networks. He talked to them and addressed the increased threat level security concerns. Within the last week also, he addressed the annual conference of the International Association of Chiefs of Police and told them very succinctly, the FBI is seeing increased threats. We are, the, the FBI, he said, are seeing bomb threats, vandalism, uh, physical assaults all on the rise now since the Hamas attack on Israel. This means it's all hands on deck. It's local, state, county, federal law enforcement, but it's also community leadership that has got to condemn the violence of all stripes and all kinds. But even as we speak today, there was a peaceful protest. As far as I can tell, please update me if there's there's news I've, I've missed. But, you know, there, there were pro-Palestinian protests today that got inside of the capital of the United States. And what did we see all over social media, including from uh, members of Congress like Marjorie Taylor Greene? This is an insurrection. Where's the FBI? Why aren't these people getting arrested? This is an insurrection equating a peaceful protest. And again, I didn't see law enforcement assaulted. I didn't see property damage to the Capitol. I didn't see an attempt to impede the, an official act of Congress. But nonetheless, it's already been equated to the insurrection of January 6th. So this is where we live. This is where we are. Um, and it's going to take increased vigilance from all of us to get through this period where we can't agree on anything, even including what appears to have been a peaceful protest. You know, for, I don't have any reporting that contradicts anything that you've said, um, and you usually have the, 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 the freshest information. Um, I, I want to ask you about something we talk about in, in the context of our, our domestic political extremism threat, and that's disinformation. Uh, Jeremy Bash was very passionate in the last hour about how headlines and assumptions and allegations and charges by Hamas um, are to blame or are, are, are part of the call and response to protests all around the Middle East, in, in Ramallah, in the West Bank, um, in Beirut and other places, that today wasn't the case, right? It wasn't the case that, that the tragic loss of life at the hospital in Gaza was the result of anything that Israel did. It was from a, a terrorist group called Islamic Jihad, a failed strike. Um, we, we talk about the inefficiency of the truth to knock down lies in, in the context of our politics. The stakes seem in some ways even more fraught in this, in this context. And it makes me wish we'd gone farther in trying to solve some of our own disinformation problems. What, what do we do? What is the state of the ability for the truth to knock down disinformation? So there, there's no question that our vote um, politically counts more than ever. You, you've got to vote this stuff out. That means voting the people behind this out of office. 
or in ensuring that they don't get back into office. But we can't talk about this without talking about the role of social media. It's the, the disinformation yeah. and propaganda is spiking, spiking all over social media, seemingly unregulated or by uh, run platforms run by people who simply don't care. I'll tell you that the recent uh, terror attack in Belgium uh, against uh, visiting Swedes there, um, Russia loved that. Russia pushed that on their social media platforms, Telegram in particular. Man, they love anything that seems to divide us. The same thing's going on right now on U.S. social media. Um, he's not to mention here overnight. We had a president of the United States who famously at a press conference in a summit with Vladimir Putin said that he questioned or didn't buy the story coming from his own U.S. intelligence. So should we be surprised when Biden comes out of a meeting with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and says, yeah, I, I saw the intel and I see why they, they're saying they didn't do it. It's clear that it didn't come from them. Um, and everybody's going, nope, nope, don't buy it. Don't buy intelligence. Can't believe anything. That, that's where we are. This is on, on us as a society for buying this stuff that's for sale on social media. And until we get our hands around controlling and regulating social media, which we seem you know, not to be able to do since we can't even get a Speaker of the House uh, voted on, um, we're in this for the long haul.